Let's get into it, shall we? This is a topic that a lot of people are struggling with. And I, I'm going to say it's GI issues. I think the GI, yeah. and you, you know my pronunciation situation, but gastrointestinal disorders. Yeah. Oh, look yes. at that. All right. Shout out, right. shout out to counselor. Listen, <laughs> listen, we try, we try. For people who are not, I'm sure there are some people out there who know exactly what we mean when we say GI disorders, but for those who don't, what is that, what exactly does that include? Obviously the stomach area, but more specifically, what does that include? For gastrointestinal disorders, um, broadly for everyone's use means things that affect the digestive tract going all the way from the mouth to the anus, right? You know, when you get specific, you can talk about areas of the process like the stomach, the large intestine, the small intestine. Some of these conditions affect certain areas particularly, but overall we're, we're talking about some of these conditions that from your mouth to your anus, you can have some sort of, you know, dysfunction, which affects your ability to absorb nutrients, your diet, um, can result in surgery, uh, sometimes, you know, even death. So big time wow. stuff going on here. Yeah. Huh. Okay. So <laughs> when we're talking about these sorts of issues, are there any specific diseases that we are thinking of when we talk about gastrointestinal disorders? So in the, in, in the vein of what I do, which is involved CBD and cannabis, um, like I've mentioned in some other things across the country where they've had medical marijuana programs where they're mm -hmm. saying, okay, these are the conditions where if you have them, you qualify for access to marijuana to help manage these conditions. And this means there's research, it's it's well accepted within like the public domain in, in academia, like, hey, this is the stuff. So we're looking at inflammatory bowel diseases. And those are like the two major ones we talk about are ulcerative colitis and Crohn's disease. And then we also talk about IBS, irritable bowel syndrome. And so, wow. yeah, so, you know, those are the three major ones and that's what we're gonna to stick to today. There is some overlap in the presentation of those conditions, but there's also some differences that we wanna, you know, make sure that we acknowledge because yeah. it affects how you would use cannabis and CBD to manage these conditions. And again, yeah. they don't cure them, they don't cure them to just help, help you manage the conditions. Okay. So oddly, Dr. Domus, you know, we usually have the opposite problem where people wait until the end of the show to call, the end of the segment to call. We have a caller right now. Uh, Ron, Roland in Texas is on the line. I'm sure, Roland, you must be mistaken for uh, Roland Martin on a regular basis, being that you are from Texas and your name is Roland. <laughs> Welcome to the Colin family. Uh, what are your comments hey, today? Just, um, yeah, I just wanted to tell him, so... Um, you know, I, I, I kind of have a little back pain, shoulder pain, that kind of thing for a while. And it's all fo old football injuries as well. Mm. So I, I ordered the tinctures, and there's like a three-pack where you get like three different ones. And, you know, I, tell, I was telling my wife, too, I'm like, hey, you know, you, this may help you go to sleep. Because she's saying that same stuff you were saying, Lorie. All of a sudden, she's hot all the time, Lord. kicking the covers off. We got it freezing in there. She's like, I need something. She tried a bunch of different stuff. But anyway, long story short, she started taking the drops. And I'm like, I can't even get none. Because she want to use it all the time. <laughs> but it's really helped me. Like, it's totally helped me. Like, I took it. And I, could, I was you know, I was thinking, man, this can't work. So I take a couple of the drops. And, like, it seems like I don't know what it is. It'll, like, loosen my back up. It's just yeah. like, I'm like relaxed and, and, and I've never been able to find anything to really help me do that. And it's totally working. Oh, so I just wanted to tell you, man, you, your stuff is really, really good. Now I did have one question. Is it okay if I smoke some and take the CBD? <laughs> yeah. Well, These are questions on what that need doing. answers. Yeah. These are questions so that need answers. What, what you, like uh, uh, weed, marijuana. Yeah, you can. You can. Um, the CBD actually mitigates the effect of the weed. So kind of balances it out for you. Remember the CBD is going to compete with receptors in your brain for sites with the THC. And so it'll kind of balance that out. And so there are people who like to take some CBD prior to smoking their, their weed or marijuana and to help them kind of find a smooth level so that it doesn't get too overwhelming for them. Mm. Okay. Roland, does that answer your question? 
Yes, it does. And, Larry, I love your show so much. Thank Both you. my kids are in college in Boston, and I got them turned on. Oh. They're turning their friends on to it. So you're definitely really making an impact. I really love your show. I, I listen to it every day because I'm in my car a lot for work. But I just want to tell you, you are like, no, what that lady called you yesterday. I don't want to call you that, but you're one of those. <laughs> Thank you, sir. I appreciate that. Yes, only Jennifer Lewis gets to say that. <laughs> but thank you, Roland. And thank you for being a part of the Colin family. So, Dr. Domus, there we have it. Uh, you know, clearly, clearly we're on to something here. Uh, and I see some folks in the chat talking about GERD as well. Is that uh, also contemplated by this? I'm not sure what GERD is. What is GERD? GERD is reflux, gastroesophageal reflux disease. Now, GERD is a little bit more complicated because it could be a result of a number of things. It could be structural. It could actually just be because of irritation, the kind of diet that you take. So we usually don't look at GERD as something that we treat with CBD and cannabis okay. because of the number of ways that it could actually present and the cause of it. Um, now, it can have managed some of the pain. So there's like, you know, that heartburn. Heartburn is a great example. You know that people mm -hmm. complain about, oh, I'll get Prilosec, OTC, and it decreases the acid. So CBD cannabis don't decrease stomach acid production like, okay. you know, some of these medications do, but it can help with like the, at night, if you can't sleep because your chest mm -hmm. is burning, right? You got, right? you got this stuff. So it'll help decrease the pain and discomfort from that. It's not going to address the underlying causes of that. So it's can't not. fix everything. Can't, you know, <laughs> can't I mean, there's so many things that you do. So it's okay yeah. that we can't do this one. I will say I have had I, many, many years ago, I had a an umbilical hernia. And ever since that moment, I would start to get really bad stomach pains. And I thought, I honestly thought that they had left an instrument inside after they sewed it up. I was like, I told Brian, I was like, something is wrong. And we went to the emergency room. That's how bad yeah, it was. And I remember we went, to, we went to the emergency room twice. And I remember telling the nurse at one point uh, whoever who came to attend me i was like ma'am this hurts worse than childbirth and that they did not believe me at all doctor because no one believes black women when we say we're in pain and she gave me a look she didn't even try to mask it she was like and she was not from the community but i yeah. heard her sucking her teeth and she was like and i was like let me tell you something i delivered my child with no anesthesia after 22 hours of labor so don't you tell me i don't know what the fuck i'm talking about this shit hurts come to find out it was acid reflux like that's what it was. And so like they gave me medications and whatnot. My mother from Jamaica was like, eh, eh. let me tell you something. <laughs> she said, you take some water, you put you a tablespoon and a half of apple cider vinegar in that and drink it or take some aloe. She gave me some internal um, uh, the, the vera, stuff yeah. in the aloe vera, blended it up. It was not delicious. But when I tell you both of those things worked amazingly well. So CBD can't do everything, but there are elements of nature that I, I do think can. So let, let's get to the things that CBD can help with now yeah. that we've taken that trip through the <laughs> medical history. Uh, who is being impacted by IBD, by these gastrointestinal diseases? What's what's the population spread of folks who are dealing with this look like? All right. So like I said, the um these inflammatory bowel conditions are, they call IBD inflammatory bowel disease. The two big ones are ulcerative colitis and Crohn's disease, right? Mm. And so what we find is people in more industrialized places like the US um, or countries that are moving on, on up, right? And then we find that it's usually people between about uh, 15 and 35 years old, but it can happen at any, any age because of the dietary impact of it all, because you can have the disease and then start doing things that trigger it, right? So it's like- Wait a oh. minute, hold on, wait a minute. You said industrialized nations. Mm -hmm. What does being industrialized have to do with the condition of our gastrointestinal system? Ah, very important. So this is something that we touch on every once in a while uh, in our- in our conversations and it's the quality the type of food the things that you're putting into your body and how those things were been been produced and prepared for you to for your consumption and so because wow. yeah because remember the i in these things stands for inflammatory and what we're talking about is your immune system being triggered by something, right? So like we mentioned in the past, inflammation is your immune system saying something's going on. We got to take action. We got to do something, right? Mm -hmm. And so, wow. you know, the things that you consume, what, they, what they're 
produced from, with, how they're preserved, all those things when you consume them can form, can actually cause systemic inflammatory reactions. Like, you know, your whole body's inflamed. And I'm sure some of you have had that. Like, uh, I can't eat a whole lot of red meat, <laughs> right? Not anymore. I eat a whole bunch of steaks or whatever. And then the next day I'm like, date, I can't step out of bed. My feet are, my feet are tender. That's the crazy wow. thing. There are people, for example, if you have conditions like gout, you can't eat red meat, drink all this alcohol, unless your, your joints are going to explode. That's an inflammatory uh, reaction to something that you consume. And your body's like, nah, we're not having the sun. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's a wrap on all of that beer and steak. So uh, in industrialized nations, it's prevalent because of how our food production cycle is, right? And so we don't produce a lot of our own foods naturally. They come from far away, they're processed, they're preserved. By the time it gets to us, um, it's not necessarily nourishing us as well as it should. In addition, we eat a very poor diet in Western because we do a lot of convenience eating and we and a lot of us tend to live in um, places where there's not a lot of fresh food. Um, so you mean being in a, a part of a, a highly developed nation is killing us? <laughs> yeah, yeah, capitalism yeah. ain't no joke. Yeah, <laughs> capitalism is all sweet. It ain't. You thought capitalism was sweet? It ain't sweet, girl. Uh, I, I think that, <laughs> but I didn't think it was this. Damn. Uh, <sighs> yeah. And so that's like Crohn's. Crohn's um, tends to affect men a bit more. Mm -hmm. And when we talk about irritable bowel disease, we switch to uh, a different thing. So irritable bowel disease is not necessarily an inflammatory condition, more of a structural thing. And basically what that means is that you're, you know, some people might say, I have a sensitive stomach. So if you hear somebody say, oh, you know, I can't really eat that. I got a sensitive stomach, right? So, and they haven't had a diagnosis. They're talking about, the way that their digestive tract has been functioning. And they'll have alternating bouts of constipation, diarrhea, cramping, bloating. You go oh. through all the tests and everybody's like, there's nothing wrong with the, your GI tract. And you're like, don't tell me there's nothing wrong with it. Cause sometimes I'm on the, you know, I'm on the toilet for days. Other times I can't poop. I'm full of gas. There is something going on here. So it's wow. usually a diagnosis of exclusion, but that tends to affect women a little bit more as opposed to the other, the other things. And, and one thing that all three of these conditions have in common is a relationship with stress. And so again, looking at the inflammatory aspect of things, right? So stress is a big contributor to inflammation throughout the entire body. And mm. stress is also a big culprit in gastrointestinal dysfunction. So stress wow. can affect you, right? You get nervous before something. Sometimes you're like, oh my God, I'm super nervous. I have to go use the bathroom. I can't, mm -hmm. right? So, so that's kind of it in a nutshell, right? Men more for the IB inflammatory diseases, women more for IBS. Capitalism is crushing us in from the gut. <laughs> it's getting us in the gut. From the inside out <laughs> and the outside in. Oh my God, you got to laugh to keep from crying. <laughs> Lord have mercy. I still ain't got nowhere for us to go, Dr. Damas. We just gonna have to figure out how to make this society better. Lord knows we in trouble. So how are people traditionally addressing these issues? And and what can CBD do to help manage some of the, the ancillary needs that develop once you have one of these diagnoses? So like I mentioned, when we first started is that the diseases sometimes can progress so bad that they can actually, you know, if untreated or something bad, you can have like a bowel perforation, which means like, that? so a bowel perforation is exactly what you hear. You can have a piece of your bowel perforate, which means there's a hole that's created there. And that Wait, when you say bowel, is that, is that intestines? Is that the yes, anus? that's your intestines, yes. So your, intestine. so your intestines through which your food has to travel can get, a, is that considered an ulcer or is uh, yeah. it something so, different? So the ulcer is like any ulcer, other ulcer that you may see in the skin. It's a breakdown of the tissue, right? Wow. Which then breaks down the function. And then sometimes the ulcers can actually go full thickness and go all the way and create this hole in your digestive tract. Wow. Very, very, very dangerous, right? Very oh dangerous. God. In those instances, surgical intervention is like super important mm. because an untreated perforation, 
um, can cause death. Free air in the abdomen and bowel can cause death. So you got it. That's a surgical emergency. I used to do that stuff when I did my gen surge internship in New York at Albert Einstein up in the Bronx. Oh, yeah. yeah, gen surge, nice. yeah. And so you can have things like that. And then prior to getting that, you can have erosion of the lining. You can have lesions that go from your mouth, like I said, all the way to your anus. It makes it difficult Damn. for you to food. Um, and so usually they'll do like things amino excuse me immunomodulators so medicines which tell your immune system to chill out right mm. so stop attacking yourself and we've yeah. talked about that like for example um in arthritis that it's your immune system acting up at your joints right and wow. so oh man there's something going on here we got to do something and as a result of that it causes more damage, right? So I always use this example. It's like an overactive police force that doesn't know how to kind of engage the, the society. It's NYPD. Positive. It's not community policing. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Slap is when they, <laughs> they become a part of the strategic response group of yeah. NYPD. <laughs> Damn, Stop that's sad. <laughs> So this same kind of stuff happens in the in in these conditions where your immune system is attacking yourself. So hmm. they'll give you the typical things, corticosteroids, other immunomodulators, biologic agents, and all those things work to a certain extent. But we know how well you know how it works in this instance is that every time you get one of those, you got a whole list of other problems that come along with it, right? Wow. So you're like, yeah, I want to get this medication because it's helping me with my UC or my Crohn's or even my IBS. But when I take this medication, it does other things. It can cause anemia. They can cause, uh, you know, risks of infection because it's decreasing your immune function, right? So you're taking mm -hmm. medication to help your bowel cal calm down and then you wind up with a pneumonia. Right. So Jim it's like Christmas. Yeah, right. Or you wind up with anemia or you wind up with these other, you know, these other things. So a lot of people, they're forced to take these things, even though they don't work well or they don't have, um, you know, the best results. Yeah. But they come to us and they're like, hey, can this stuff help? And we're like, yeah, this is one of the conditions because of the immune mods, the anti-inflammatory components of CBD and cannabis can actually decrease. And there have been studies on that, decrease the flare-ups and breakouts of it, right? So mm. the traditional medications are really rough at times. And if they don't work, then you got to progress all the way, sometimes having sections of your colon removed, literally, because it's no longer any use because of the outbreak. And so that happens. Unfortunately, sometimes people wind up with ostomy bags, things like that, you know, yeah, unfortunately. Wow. So these conditions can progress, you know, that far. And I think, you know, when I was uh, in residency, one of the things that we didn't do, so we, you know, we'd manage some of these people by the time they got to us in gen surge, we were doing like the corrective surgeries, you know, the surgeries to care for these people. And then um, we didn't really give them other options like dietary counseling, those type of things. We kind of like went in, did our thing, and we're like, sayonara, man. <laughs> like, here, you want Good to luck. get ostomy, you get the ostomy nurse, blah, blah, blah. We did mm -hmm. the hemicolectomy, you know, so long and now all the other stuff. And I think that was a... Uh, you know, I think that 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 was not the best way to manage conditions. I think a lot of people did not understand the importance of diet. Yeah, and lifestyle still to this day, doc, medical students are not yeah. getting a lot of training in diet and how food like the things that you have to put in your mouth every single day for you to live. It's amazing to me that our medical students are not required to spend more time learning about how the foods that we eat and the preservatives and chemicals within them, industrialized nations, uh, how they impact the body. Uh, Dr. Damas, I know we're going to get to the component of this where we delve into CBD specifically as a, as a point of support for these issues. But we do have another first time caller. This is Kenneth from Mississippi who has a question for you. So Kenneth, uh, let's go ahead and give him Mama his. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, my question. Oh, Hi. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. My question is I have an uncle that smokes cigarettes and is there any CBD that can help weed him off? We've been trying something with them and um and i know it takes him to want to stop but uh he really needs some help hmm. mm. so we'll, we'll take a slight detour from cbd and and the gi tract issues is there a support that cbd can provide for people who are struggling with nicotine addiction 
I think we 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 touched on this maybe uh, last year. At some mm -hmm. point we mm -hmm. talked about addiction and cannabis and CBD, alcohol and nicotine and other and opioids. And there have been many studies that have shown that CBD has um, helped people wean themselves off of other uh, addictive substances, alcohol, opioids, and nicotine. And the reason being is because of the dopamine and the serotonin uh, effects of those things, right? So you you smoke a cigarette or you, you have a drink or you, you, know, you take your Percocet or whatever, and then it starts releasing these newer transmitters in your body. And once you get those, depending on how long the, um, the, the distance, the duration of activity. So nicotine doesn't, they're those receptors, and this is the reason why people chain smoke, is that those receptors don't stay activated for a long period of time. So you smoke, and then you get that feeling, and then those receptors are then up regularly, and they're like, where's that stuff you gave us 15 minutes ago? We want it again, right? And so mm -hmm. when you consume CBD, and even THC to an extent, some of those receptors are then covered. And so they're not as like, oh, please give it to me again, right? They have something that's like, nah, you don't really need it. And so in that as part, now it's not like a magic bullet. You still have to engage in the behavior modica modification. A lot of smoking um, is ritualistic. So you have these behaviors, which are part of like your routine. I need something in my hand when I'm doing something. I need something in my lips when I'm doing something. Mm -hmm. You know, when I'm driving, I do this. After I eat, I have to do it. So a lot of it has to do with kind of, you know, um, psychological programming as well. So behavior modification and other things are a big uh, help. The patch works as well. So the nicotine patch helps people kind of wean off because one of the worst things we know about the... Um, we know about the risks for lung cancer and, and, and esophageal cancer and mouth cancer and all that good stuff. But it's also horrible for women, for your ovaries. It literally fries your ovaries. Ooh. And for men, yeah. So because it disrupts your endothelium of your vasculature. So your arteries and veins get all jacked up. And so it causes heart disease, number one cause of heart disease, cardiovascular disease, abdominal aortic aneurysms. So for men, it'll mess up your, your reproductive. It'll, it's a big component of erectile dysfunction. Cigarettes are one of the worst, like they're like one of the worst things. Yeah. So yeah, it can help, but it'd be part of like a, an entire kind of program. All right. Yeah. So th thank you for that substantive conversation. Kenneth, I'm actually, or d response, Dr. Domus. Kenneth, I'm going to actually encourage you to also call Dr. Domus's office because we have it on pretty good authority. And by that, I mean Urban View testimonies that when our audience calls uh, Dr. Domus's office, they get phenomenal service and are able to have in depth questions and, and have a back and forth that really allows them to figure out their path forward. So I would encourage you to give them a call. Dr. Domus, what's your number again? I know we're going to give it out at the end, but just so folks yeah. have it already because I, I already know. <laughs> It's 833-362-3262, uh, 833-362-3262. Hit us up because your questions actually help us out a lot. Yeah. Let's guide us, things that we need to investigate, learn, topics that we discuss on the show. <laughs> Sometimes, right? You can see like even during this show, people call with other things, which is right. like, <laughs> And so, right. yeah, hit us up. We're happy to talk to you. And, you know, of course, we're happy to help. So that makes us yeah, all. It looked like we had a couple of folks who called who were trolling. They <laughs> dropped. So, you know. Oh, man. You know, they, oh, they oh, man. <laughs> Fire River. River. So let, let's get back to our, our the, the main issue that we wanted to address today, which mm -hmm. is CBD and gastro and gastrointestinal mm -hmm. uh, maladies. So now that you've explained to us what the traditional American approach, I shouldn't call it traditional, yeah. what the American Western approach to GI issues looks like and, and the, the benefits and negatives of that type of protocol, what can CBD do to help support people who are dealing with GI issues? And, and one thing I believe you said earlier was that because CBD has a calming impact and it helped can it can help to reduce inflammation that seems to me like one of the biggest benefits but but you're the expert what what say yeah. you you hit it right on the head big time we've been doing yeah you're like an expert right. right now too I, well i pay attention <laughs> Let me find now you're coming from my job. <laughs> Never that, <laughs> sir. 
I got too many legal legal issues yeah. to address and advocacy to be trying to do medicine until I become a midwife once I retire yeah. from the law. Ooh, in the we universe. actually have a cannabis midwife that works with us. What? Yeah. Oh, we got to have a conversation yeah. about that at some point. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, doula, yeah. Um, nice. So we help her guide her patients through wow. their birthing process. Um, so the anti-inflammatory effects this is the biggest thing that CBD helps contribute to that, right? So again, using that old, like, um, you know, police forcing kind of uh, analogy, you have a police force <laughs> that shows up, they're always on edge, they're always like ready for action, even though there is no action, but they're just hyper vigilant. So every time they see something- they Ain't no action, they gonna make action. They're cause... gonna make the action, right? And then as a result, they create more problems because mm. of their overzealous nature. And so yeah. what the CBD and the THC does, but mostly CBD in this instance, is because of its potent anti-inflammatory, it calms that police force down. And so now in mm. certain areas, like we mentioned again, like with the arthritic conditions, it's in the joints. In this particular case, IBS um, and the inflammatory bowel diseases, it's in the gut. And so it decreases the amount of damage or the hyperactivity of your immune system as it mm -hmm. pertains to your gut. And so it, um, it decreases the flare-ups and the duration of the flare-ups. And that's really important yeah. because again, some of these conditions, like we mentioned, it's in the name, ulcerative, right? So it creates ulcers. And these ulcers, if this lasts for a long time, can eventually wear or erode the lining of the bowel at any point, you know, any point. And that's a major, 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 major problem for you, right? So and if the then, GI issues are the NYPD, then CBD <laughs> is are the P, the mental health workers that you should have had instead of the the, the yeah the, right that's right CBD that's is the, the the violence interrupters that should have been relied upon as opposed to calling the NYPD so so this is what we what we want is the calming soothing yeah. impact that CBD provides we don't want the rawr, 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 yeah. woo, woo, of the of the NYPD exactly. and I would say oh, Eric right. Adams is providing the food mm. <laughs> the capital is Eric Adams He's wait. He's okay, let's Cisco do a food system. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, I don't know. Sidebar. This is a complete separate <laughs> issue. Have you seen any of the videos from the interview that he did with yeah. Olayemi Oloren and yeah. the Breakfast yeah. Club? I, I don't I'm not a fan of the Breakfast Club usually, but I'm a huge fan of Olayemi Oloren and brother. Oh my, my god. Or my man was squirming. i you know what's funny is uh, like having been a man that's been in really competitive. So I've been in some spaces where like, this is like, yo, if you ain't about that life, don't even come in here. You like, you don't belong here, right? Like in this room, it's only for the manliest of men. Don't mess around here, right? You can tell when a man starts to shrink. Like you can look at him Ooh. and see him feel uncomfortable. And it's like, you can see like, bro, you ain't gonna make it. <laughs> Like, right. Mm -hmm. So in that interview, I could see, you know, if this was another format, I could see the B in him, right? But I ain't gonna see. Let's not see. let's not say that. I still gotta <laughs> work in this city. Yeah, but I could see, like I, I I I was like, yo, she's taking his soul right there, man. And you're finished, yeah. bro. You were not ready. You underestimated your opponent. You thought you could not believe. In. I, could not, I couldn't believe the interview actually happened because she has such a history of effectively critique. And we're actually we're working to get her on the show. I love her. But she has such a history of very powerfully critiquing the missteps that his administration has made. I couldn't believe they actually did it. He sat down and had the conversation. Yeah, she's well prepared, too. That's the Bruh. You come yes. in. You come in and you think you're just going to like smile and kind of brush. So his kind of thing was very dismissive when it started, like he thought. And then when she went in on him, you can see him trying to be like, like, I, I, I swore at one point in, I could see in his face that he wanted to say, take it easy, toots. <laughs> like, 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 you know what I'm saying? Like something very dismissive, like, hey, yes. what's going on here, right? And then as she went in, I could see him like squirm. Mm -hmm. And I was like, man, you're finished, bro. You're finished right now. You're finished. Anybody watching this just saw you got to get destroyed. <laughs> right. So then maybe a better analogy is that CBD is the Olayemi Oloren. <laughs> <to> the <laughs> 
That's right. CBD is the is the defender of yes. the people that we need to help with our GI. <laughs> Holy crap! Wait, Harvey Damas, it's eleven fifty three. We're at the end of the show. Look at it. This is what detours do. I should have saved this for after the show conversation. All right, so give us the give us the, just a minute or two more of what CBD can do to yeah. calm down the gastrointestinal yeah. system. So what we want to do, you know, when we work with our patients, so, uh, someone called earlier about smoking. So we don't, because when you're dealing with chronic conditions, you want medicines that stay in your body longer periods of time. So we like oral things. It's an oil, so it's not going to inflame, inflame the bowel if you take it, right? Mm -hmm. um, so as opposed to smoking, again, um, you could smoke, but it's not really, you know, our like major thing. We like people to take capsules, oils. And so as you take a daily dose of that, <clears throat> it helps decrease the inflammatory response you know, and then slowly de decrease the, the flare-ups that you have. So there have been a number of research studies, the Journal of Cl Clinical Gla Gastroenterology um, found that uh, cannabis CBD can induce re remission in patients with, with Crohn's disease, mm. uh, um, <clears throat> Journal of Inflammatory Bowel Diseases, um, it suggested that CBD can decrease the amount of inflammation and the European Journal of Gastroenterology and Hepatology um, showed sure. that cannabis can help with GI disorders. So when I talk about this stuff, it's not like uh, just me saying I heard from my boy, right? <laughs> this clinical research that has shown that this kind of stuff, these compounds actually help. And the you know the thing that it all goes down back to is the inflammation. And so mm -hmm. decreasing the inflammation will help you decrease the discomfort. And then when it comes to irritable bowel, the stress, right? The stress is a big part of that. And so the CBD, when we talk about anxiety, et cetera, the CBD is a big part of decreasing the stress. Mm. All right. I like this a lot. Uh, we have more calls, but we, we're not going to have time to get to them. Um, Amina, do I, is what's on, what's happening with number 10? Is that a thing? Okay. Uh, so we, we quickly, Dr. Damas, we have somebody who wants to know if you ever have done work with animals, they have a service animal. Uh, have you ever done any work in terms of CBD with animals or better yet, I'm going to have them call your office so that you, cause you know, cause we at the end and I, I made a commitment to the team. I would stop taking calls. <laughs> at the very last minute and then trying to have a decent end to the show. So uh, to the caller who wants to know, Susan, uh, you want to know about the service animal, I'm going to ask that you call Dr. Damas. Uh, same thing with Michelle. We are, we're at the end of the show today. Uh, but Dr. Damas, as usual, you are here to help us get the insight that we need. And I have it on good authority. You will also be part of our flower, our, our cannabis town hall that's taking place later this month. So... Um, in I'm person, gonna... live and in person. Live and in live person. And, in and person. on his best behavior yeah. will no, be Dr. Herbie. The crowd Herbie better Dumps. be live. The crowd, listen, <laughs> just don't be having me squirming in my... <laughs> <laughs> I will not give you the Ola Yemi Oloran treatment. Listen, I will tell you right now, I'm too cool for that. First of all, <laughs> I am way too cool, way too well prepared, <laughs> way too thorough to come into a situation and get myself broken. That it, it never up yeah. on the ropes in life. That, that. <laughs> 